This video is brought to you by Audio Control, making good sound great. When we build a custom car audio system, we of course want it to sound amazing. In order to make our system sound amazing, we need to have the ability to manipulate the audio signal that comes from the source unit and is then sent out to the different speakers and subwoofer. A well-known car audio company that is known for creating devices that give us the ability to control the sound is Audio Control, and they recently released their new DM810 digital signal processor. So what do we need to do in order to install the new DM810, and what features does it have that will allow us to make good sound great? That's coming up. So as you can see, I've installed the DM810 into this Jeep build that I'm currently working on. In this install, I'm actually using the factory head unit from the Jeep, which has a non-flat equalization curve, and the DM810 will actually allow me to fix that. Now the DM810 is also great, even if you were using an aftermarket head unit, as it gives us the ability to manually adjust equalization, we can control time alignment, and we can also control the crossover settings for each of our different output channels that might be going to different speakers. So let's take a quick look at how I actually installed this into the vehicle. One of the first things that we need to do in order to install the DM810 is of course pick a mounting location and mount it within the vehicle. Audio Control recommends that you mount the unit in the trunk or cargo area, and you just want to mount the unit somewhere that it's away from sources of heat, dirt, or water. In terms of connections, of course we're going to need a 12 volt constant source and ground. Now typically with a device like this, you would need a remote turn on lead. Fortunately though, Audio Control has included their GTO technology on this DSP, which stands for Great Turn On. Once this device detects a signal on the input, it then automatically turns the unit on, so you don't have to run a remote turn on lead. The device also features a remote out, which will allow you to turn on your amplifiers from this device. Now we of course need to provide an audio input into this device, so in this case I'm using the factory Jeep head unit. I get the audio signal by tapping into the factory speaker wiring. Now what's awesome about this DSP is because it has 8 speaker level inputs, it's perfect for vehicles that have a premium audio system. Many times with a premium audio system, the signal at the speakers may be bandwidth limited. In other words, it may just be high frequencies for a tweeter and mid-range frequencies on a separate speaker. With the DM810, we can take signal from both of these channels of the premium audio system and sum them together so that we have a usable signal later that we can amplify. More on this once we take a look at the computer software. The DM810 also features RCA line level inputs along with coaxial and optical digital inputs. On the output side, we have 10 RCA analog line level outputs. These outputs are what we use to send the signal to our amplifiers or other equipment, and of course we can determine exactly what parts of the signal is on each channel of these outputs. Next up we have the remote control connector, which allows us to connect the optional ACR3 remote level control. This device gives us the ability to select one of the four different presets that we can set up on the DSP, and in the programming software we can determine exactly what this level remote will do. A few examples are we could use it as an overall volume control, or we could even use it as a subwoofer output control. Finally, Audio Control has implemented an options port which I'm told will be used for a Bluetooth option in the future. On top of the DM810, we'll find multiple different indicator lights. These lights help to detect maximized inputs and outputs along with Audio Control's MILC technology. The MILC, or Maximum Input Level Control Indicator, will light up when a clipped or distorted signal is detected. This allows you to optimize the level of the incoming audio signal. The true power though of the DM810 is having the ability to connect to it via a USB port and completely tune your audio system via Audio Control Smart DSP application. When we first enter the device, we'll have to enter a PIN code. This PIN code can of course be changed. The tuning program is broken up into three main views, input, output, and dashboard. Starting with our input view, we'll play pink noise through the audio system and then turn it up to an acceptable level. Now right now, if you look in the upper left corner, you can see that I'm on inputs one and two. Now you can also see via the input RTA down below that we have a full range signal. To me, this is a huge advantage. Before in the past, we'd have to always make sure that we connected an RTA to each of the different speaker wires before we actually even hooked up our DSP, just so that we knew what we had to work with at the start. But since the DM810 has an integrated RTA within the software, we can easily see what we have to work with, and then we know if we need to sum any channels. 
Here on the input view screen, we can also set our input gain levels as well as our left and right delay for each channel. Next, we can switch to the output view, which controls everything that's going to happen to the signal and then be sent out of the DSP. One of the first things that you'll probably want to do during this part of the process is turn on the mute. Turning this on prevents signal from being sent out of the device, which allows you to make all the initial settings with turning up the level of the source unit, but without potentially damaging the speakers. You can then turn the mute off later when you are actually tuning. So right now I have outputs 1 and 2 selected, and what I can tell the DSP is that I want it to sum the inputs from 1 and 2 as well as 3 and 4. This would be handy for when you're integrating with a premium sound system where you had tweeter level frequencies on channels 1 and 2 and everything else on 3 and 4. You can then sum the signals to have a full range. We can also of course control our output level of each channel pair. For our crossover, we can control the crossover slope, and we can also control our high pass and low pass crossover frequencies. It's important to note that the RTA graph that we're seeing at the bottom of the output view screen is actually the output response. You can tell here because for channels 5 and 6 out, even though I'm using a full range signal that comes in on channels 3 and 4, I have a crossover applied, and this is actually for my subwoofer. Below the crossover settings, we can adjust our time alignment for each channel. This allows us to compensate for the speed of sound and the difference in distance from each speaker to our listening position. For a starting point of this setting, we simply measure using a tape measure and then input that value into the software. Next, we have a button in order to activate each of the different outputs for the ACR3 remote. Being able to turn this on for different channel pairs allows us to use it as an overall volume control or to control just certain speakers like subwoofers. Under output configuration, we have three different options, the first of which is mono. This allows you to sum a stereo pair down to mono, which can be useful for time alignment, checking input polarity, and also for a subwoofer channel. The 180 degree button allows you to easily switch the polarity of the output that's selected. Finally, the link button allows you to link to other channels so that you can adjust output settings for multiple channels at once. It's very common for factory sound systems to have a bass reducing feature that helps protect the factory stock speakers. But of course when we're building an aftermarket sound system, we're adding new speakers and subwoofers that can handle that bass, so we want to bring it back into the signal, and Audio Control's AccuBase technology is the perfect solution for this. With the AccuBase section, we can control the threshold at which the feature turns on, and we can also control how much bass it adds back into the signal, and we also have the option of bypassing it completely. Now finally, at the bottom of the output view screen, we have a 30-band equalizer that we can control. You can pick between a 10-band, a 14-band, or a 30-band equalizer, and one of the coolest features is the auto equalization. When we click the auto EQ button, the program will quickly and accurately undo the factory EQ curve coming from the factory head unit. This will give us a flat output to our amplifiers, which is a great starting point before we do actual tuning using an RTA microphone. The program is designed to not make too drastic of adjustments the first time it's ran, so once we run it a second time, it will tune even further and flatten the response even more. Once we are tuning with the RTA microphone, we can then of course control each band of frequencies independently. Now I did want to note that at the time of shooting this video, you can only control the EQ for each channel pair, but since the DM810 has the ability to be updated via a firmware update, I'm told that the individual channel EQ feature will be released very soon. Now before we switch to the dashboard view, it's important to look at the buttons under memory, which indicate each of the four different memory settings. This allows us to set up to four different memory presets, but an important thing to point out is that it will not allow you to adjust the crossover between the different memory presets. This is designed intentionally to prevent you from accidentally sending a full range signal to something like a tweeter and then breaking it. You can also save all of your settings to the computer so that in the event that you need to reset the unit, you can reload it with all of your tunes. Now if we switch to the dashboard view, we basically have a view of all the different settings that we've controlled up to this point. The advantage here is that we can see both the input RTA as well as the output RTA. 
Overall, this screen serves as a great dashboard for quickly accessing everything we need in order to tune our system, which we can then proceed to do with Audio Control's SA4100i measurement microphone. This is shown in one of my previous videos. Having the ability to manipulate the sound through all the different settings within this DSP is really critical to making a great sounding system. A special thanks goes out to Audio Control. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. I've really been enjoying the DM810 and I'm looking forward to playing with it more in the future and tweaking and continuing to tune the system here in the Jeep. If you would like to purchase the DM810, be sure to visit audiocontrol.com. They have a dealer locator that you can use to find out where you can get one of these near you. As always guys, thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to check out one of the other related videos to audio control, you can do so here on screen. Thank you again everyone for watching.